So a couple videos ago, I built this battery from Yizhong. It was a DIY battery kit where you put your own cells in there and wire it all up. And it was way easier than I thought it was gonna be. And I got several comments and questions and stuff in that video. So I wanna try to address those today. And then I also wanna go over the software. I'm gonna see if I can reset this and then go back through and set it back up again with the software and go through it with you guys. Now, since this is a battery kit, you have to buy your own batteries. So a lot of people were concerned with sourcing the batteries and making sure they got the right ones. So there's a, a few things you gotta look out for. One, you're looking for a 3.2 volt lithium iron phosphate battery cell. So when you times that times 16, that adds up to the 51.2 volts that the nominal voltage of the battery is. And the next thing you need to know is you need to have the right dimensions. And I think that on their website, they have a picture with the dimensions in millimeters. You may have to convert that over to, you know, English to inches uh, to be able to find the cells that match up to be the same size. And then the third thing has to do with the capacity of the battery. How many amp hours are in it? Well, I'm pretty sure that you can fit multiple sizes in this battery. So you can get 280 amp hour batteries and I think you can get all the way up to around 320 amp hours. So there's about four or five different sizes of batteries within that range that are dimensionally the same dimensions and the same voltage. It's just, they have a little bit more storage in them. And any of those batteries, you know, that have the right dimensions will, will work in this battery kit. So in that video, there was a link to some batteries uh, that you could buy from Alibaba. And when you got onto that page, there was several different sizes of batteries. I think it came up as 280 amp hour batteries, but if you look off to the side, there was like 304, 306, 314. There's several different sizes you could buy. And oh, the other thing you're looking for is you're looking for the batteries to have the double studs. The way the, the bus bars and everything attach in this kit, it needs to have the double holes uh, to bolt it in. And that's gonna depend on what kind of DIY kit you have. You're just gonna wanna make sure that the battery has the right type of connections for that kit. And this kit has the double holes. And what that does is that gives you a bigger surface area for your bus bar, and it allows you to have better uh, current flow out of the battery with that, that double connection. And with the Alibaba website, I know a lot of people were concerned buying from there. I think you actually, are, you're buying that probably from China and it's shipping to the United States and that can be pretty expensive on the shipping. So I think there's one comment where a guy said he bought, I think he said he bought the kit and he bought 16 battery cells and to get it shipped, which I think the total for that was around $1,100, I think. But he said, you know, the, the total was shipping was 1900 So that was like $800 shipping and handling. But I think that $1,900 price range, if you would try to source this in the United States, it's going to be somewhere similar to there, $1,900 to $2,200 probably to build this battery. Now, if you didn't want to buy your battery cells through Alibaba, I did find a couple places um, and I'll try to, maybe I'll put one of them up. One of them was Expert Power. You could buy it off of their website or they sell on Amazon and you could buy, you know, a, just a 16 pack of the batteries. And I think it was uh, right at $1,700. And that was free shipping as well. And then I found a, another place. They had Eve brand cells, which some people would probably say that's the, the best known name brand of battery cells. Um, but you did have to pay shipping on those and the price was a little bit different. I think with shipping, when I priced it out, it was about $1,900 for just the batteries. Uh, but you can source them in the United States um, if you want to go that route instead of going with Alibaba. Now, when you do source out your batteries and you're going to compare that dimension to what the, the manufacturer says they should be and what that batteries you buying are, they're not gonna exactly match. They may, they're gonna be a few thousandths difference in width or height or, or uh, length, you know? So uh, when you compare it, it just really needs to be close within like 20 thousandths or so. I mean, you gotta think that like 20 thousandths is probably like six sheets of paper. It's, it's not very much difference. So as long as that number is, is within 
20, 30 thousandths, those battery cells are gonna fit in, in that case. So I did have some people ask about what the size of this battery was. Of course, that depends on what cells you buy. So if you buy the 280 amp cells, you take that 280 times the nominal voltage of 51.2 volts and you come up with 14.3 kilowatt hours. Uh, now in my instance, I, they sent me, I'll put a picture of it up on the screen, they sent me batteries that were 300 and I think six amp hours. And so if you take that times 51.2, I believe that my battery ends up being somewhere around 15.6 kilowatt hours, I think is roughly the size. So another thing people were concerned about was that uh, when I powered it up, it had error codes on the, on the screen and on the battery management system. And I think that was just all part of the setup. It was in an error code that was forcing you to, to set up a couple parameters on the inside before it would clear. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna hit the reset button. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the breaker off, uh, leave it powered up, but it won't be outputting any power. And uh, we're gonna reset this and hopefully it'll, I'll start from scratch from the beginning and hopefully I'll have the same error codes and I can show them to you. So we'll go ahead and turn this off. And then there is a reset button that is recessed in here. And if I turn out, push that, you can see all the lights went out. Hopefully you can see that, all the LEDs went out. And I believe I have to hit the on off button again. There, and now it'll boot back up. So when it booted back up, it actually doesn't, it's not an alarm. So it didn't wipe out all the settings like I was hoping. So the, basically what the alarm was, it was just a generic alarm on the front of the battery. But when you got in the app, it told you basically you needed to reset the password, basically get rid of the default password, make a new one. And then it wanted you to go through and set the time, which it would automatically do, um, and match it to your phone. So that was the only two things you had to do and that would clear the error, but then there's several other things you need to set up in it as well. So the app that you use on your phone is the JK BMS app and it's gonna use Bluetooth. It'll find the battery and then the serial number, I believe of the battery management system will be here on the screen. And then you select that and it, you hear it kind of, there's a little beep on the battery and it'll come up with the stats. So you can, you can monitor the battery without having the password. But um, to change anything, you're gonna have to type in the password. So the default password is one, two, three, four, five, six. And all I did is I just changed it to six, five, four, three, two, one. So as you look at the, the front screen here, you can see it's got the total uh, voltage and amperage, and that amperage will be plus or minus, depending on whether it's discharging or charging. And then you can see all of the little stats and cell voltages and stuff on here. Now, if you take this and you swipe it, swipe to the left, it'll bring up more of a settings page. Now, you can, you can see a little bit, but you can't do anything until you verify your password. So you gotta type in the password. We'll see if it kept it. It still kept my old password. Um, so now once you do that, it changes to modify password. And uh, that's, you would select that again, modify password, if you wanted to change the, the password to something different. But uh, you only got like five settings that are showing up. If you hit the advanced settings, you end up with a couple screens full of settings here <laughs> for you to be able to set. But really the top ones are, are the main ones. So the first thing you're gonna do is the cell count. There's 16 battery cells. So you gotta make sure that's in there. And then you're gonna put in the, the battery opacity of the cells that you bought. For me, it was 306 amp hours and we got that put in there. And then the, the next thing is it does have active balancing on that BMS. So you can tell it when to active balance. So if the cells are uh, 10 millivolts out difference from each other, it'll try to actively balance them. So that's, that's what you're setting there is um, the threshold to, to activate the active balancing. Uh, the, now the next thing, these are your calibrations. So um, it says calibrating voltage 52.3. That's what it thinks the voltage is right now. So what I would do is I would charge it up all the way, uh, get it done and charged, and then let it sit for a second or a few minutes 
and then I would measure it with a multimeter or maybe a couple multimeters. Uh, but I would, I would read the voltage manually and then I would, uh, what you could do is you can, you can click on this and then you can enter what the actual voltage truly is and it'll recalibrate to the measurement that you took. And then you have to hit the OK button here on the side and it'll set it. And then there's also a calibration for amps. So you could have this thing running. You'd want like a constant load, like maybe a heater or some kind of resistive load that is very constant. And um, you'd want to monitor that with your uh, multimeter. You would put a DC amp clamp on that and you would monitor it with your meter, make sure that it's, it's staying steady. And then once you get your reading on the meter, you could go in here and you could type in what the true amperage is and hit OK and it would calibrate the, the amperage that it's reading. Now as we scroll down the screen, it has a lot of different settings in here. And remember you have to have your password typed in before any of these settings are active before you can change them. Uh, but you can go down, one of them in here is the communication protocol. So here it is, CAN protocol. So if you click CAN bus protocol, it's going to bring up an entire list of all the different communications. And of course, I've got it set on Lux power to be able to communicate to the EG4 stuff. And then you would select that and then hit the OK to set it. So that's how you set up the communication. When you're looking at this list, there's a lot of abbreviations. You got to kind of think about what they mean, like um, over temperature protect protection, over current protection. There's a bunch of stuff in here, but you can set the charge rate and the discharge rate as well in here. So right here is continued charge current. And I, I believe it was only set at maybe 20 or 30. And I changed that up to 60 amps. So that's the max charging current. And then you, of course you have the max discharge current here and it was already set at 200 amps. I just left it the way it was. Now there's also a couple of settings in here for what the, the battery cell voltage is when it's 100% charged and when it's 0% charged or discharged. And um, so what you would do is you would fully charge your battery and you would look and see what the actual cell voltages are and then in here, you would, would type in what the average voltage is. Uh, right now, it's set at 3.5 volts. You might have to change that to like 3.48 volts or something. You might have to change it just a little bit. And then, of course, down here, there's another one for what a completely, uh, completely dead battery would be, and it's set at 2.6 volts. Now, I didn't change any of these because my battery, when it was fully charged, it read 99%, and I thought that was close enough. So that's the settings page. But there's actually one more page if you swipe to the left and this is going to be a page with like on off settings. So you can turn your, your charge on and off, your discharge on and off. You can turn the active balancing. You, if you don't want the active balancing, you can turn it off. And one of the things I did in here, there is a always on display and the default was turned on and that meant the display on the front of the battery was on all the time which in my opinion, that would slowly drain your battery. So I just turned off the uh, display always on. And now to see the screen, all you gotta do is just touch it and it'll come on. And if you don't touch the screen in 10 seconds or so, it'll, it'll turn right back off. So there are a couple accessories that you can get for this battery. So one of them is uh, they do have like a, a rolling dolly that's the same size of the battery that the battery fits on. And then you can stack three or four batteries on top of that, and then you can move them around with that uh, dolly. And then another thing that they have, and people asked about this, is they do have heating pads where you could put the heating pads down in the bottom and then put the, the battery cells on top, and then you wire those heating pads to the, to the BMS. And inside of the software on that on-off screen is where you tell it whether you have heating pads or not, and you can um, activate them. The BMS is capable of, of using heating pads, plus you, you can buy them as an accessory if you want to build it uh, in case you're putting it in, in a location that might get below freezing. You'd, you'd want to have those heaters in there. Well, I told you wrong. You don't actually touch the screen to get the screen to come back on. All you do is you tap the on-off button once and the screen will come on. 
If you want to turn off the unit, I think you actually got to hold the on off button down for a few seconds. But I'll go ahead and I'll turn this back on and uh, keep using it. So I've been using it now for what, a couple weeks maybe? And it's been working fine for me, no problems. It's actually the biggest battery I have. It's a little over a kilowatt hour bigger than the wall mount batteries with the cells that I have in there. Well, I hope this helps answer most of the questions and comments people had about this DIY battery kit and hopefully showing the software and the settings and stuff and just kind of how to work through the software. Hopefully that helps a little bit, gives everybody a little bit better idea of how the, the setup process would go. But I think that's going to end up being it for this video, guys. So I hope you have a great day. I'll see you next time.